Hello, my fabulous people, and welcome to the Awesome Year Bootcamp. I'm so excited to have you here today. Just let you know, there are five dogs in this room, so we'll see how that works. And I just want to thank you for being here and really taking a look at what it's going to take for you to have a truly awesome year. So today, woo, we are going to set a ground of being. So today is all about setting a ground of being. Now, way back, before I was in RV, before I was even a coach, I was an entrepreneur starting out on my spiritual path. And I heard two things that have changed my life forever. The first one was from Reverend John Constein, and he said, you are perfect, whole, and complete, just as you are. Powerful words, and it took me a long time to finally accept that. The next thing I heard, almost right around the same time, would have been this. It makes me conscious, like I, I say, I'm my grandmother's, you know, first grandchild. And I think about how my grandmother feels about me, and I think about so many different things that it allows me to just see that person over there. I know he did different. that for me too. He asked me that question about who am I? I spent three days trying to answer that question. question. Yes. There's so many ways. To and answer. that got me thinking, oh my goodness, who am I in my core? Now, just like old Curtis over there, I am my grandmother's first grandson. But when we talk about being my grandmother's grandson, typically that means I'm going to get something accomplished and it doesn't matter what, I have to do to get there. It's normally not a nice thing, right? It means that I'm going to go in there. I'm going to cause holy hell and I'm going to get what I want. It's not normally the most empowering thing. And so when I say I am my grandmother's grandson, you might want to get on my way. Now, way back then, I didn't know all the things I know now about how you create your identity and see there's this big secret. It happened probably before you were 10 years old. Now, I'm going to give you a little exercise. I want you guys to sit down and think back. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think back to maybe second, third grade. You're still kind of like at school, but you, you're in the routine, right? And the teacher says to you, who was the first president of the United States? And your hand shoots up, Bam! because you know who it is and you're jumping up and down and you're all excited and you yell out, Abraham Lincoln. Obviously that was wrong. And classmates probably laughed at you. Your teacher probably said, no, that's not right. And you were feeling some kind of way, no matter what that is. Right now, in that moment, you said three things that changed your life. You said, I am something. My teacher is. And the students are. Right? You said something about all of them. And it might have been, I'm stupid. I will never raise my hand again. I'll do this. Because you're, you know, let's face it, we were all upset. The kids were laughing. You probably called them assholes. You might have said they're mean, they're whatever, right? And your teacher was, you know, just wants to pick on you. The, wor the teacher represents the world. The world is, the world just wants to pick on you, right? And the kids are, um, uh, people, right? And people are stupid and I will never raise my hand again. And every time you get stressed, every time you get triggered, you probably resort right back into that space of that second grader. See, we create all these labels that we put on ourselves over and over and over again. And what this is designed to do, what today is designed to do is to take away some of those labels so that you can create yourself newly today from nothing. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to create a being statement. Who are you at your core? Something that you could go back to 
so that you can remind yourself who you are in your best, right? There's some things that you want to stay away from. The first thing is you want to be broad because if it's too narrow, then it doesn't encompass everything in your life. For instance, when I, it's not what you do, right? I'm a mechanic, maybe true for some of you, or I'm a coach, might be true for some of you. And that doesn't encompass everything that you are, right? Make sure that it's personal. Focus on the many gifts that you bring to the world. While I'm a man, definitely is true. It doesn't encompass how I show up in the world. You want it to be inspiring. Your being statement should inspire you and possibly those you share it with. And it really does start firm. Who I am is. Who I am at my core is. It's not who I would like to be. So some of the things that you want when it's, uh, does it, your being statement match who you are at the core? Does your being statement inspire you? Does your being statement allow for a full life or is it too specific? And does the actions that you're doing now match your being statement? Sometimes that's what gets you. Now, special caveat for parents. Yes, you are a parent. You might be a loving parent, but you were somebody before that and you will be somebody after they're out of the home. So being a parent, a loving parent, doesn't necessarily match who you are at the core. It's who you are. Now at my very core, after many years of things and going back to this, and I've gone back to it a few times, I'll be honest with you, it's to get it more concise and to be more clear with the new understanding of who I am, right? So who I am is the divine space anchored by my in-breath and solidified by all other sparks of the divine. Can you see how that would be who I am at the core? At the very being of myself is a divine space. Now there's things I add to this, right? I add, I am a loving, compassionate, and powerful leader who has created a truly awesome life, not only for myself, but those in my sphere of influence. I also add, I'm an instrument of peace in the perceived chaos. I'm a resilient adventurer who chooses to love my life, be the dominant creator, and live in my purpose with health and vitality. See, all those statements are true. At my core, I could say that. I'm a resilient adventurer who chooses to love my life, be the dominant creator, and live in my purpose with health and vitality. Is a very much me at my core. I have to remember that sometimes. Right? I'm an instrument of peace in the perceived chaos. Am I living that? So things actually use this in your daily life. You could actually... Number one, I use it every morning. These are my affirmations. It's my reminder to myself that this is who I am and this is who I want to present to the world. Uh, you want to look at, are your thoughts aligned? Are your actions aligned? And are your words aligned? Now, sometimes I am not the instrument of peace. Sometimes I forget that I'm an instrument of peace. Sometimes I revert back into regular old human but we're called for greater. And when I'm at my greatest, that's when the magic happens. Your mission is to download the workbook down below and to create your own being statement. Answer, who are you at your core? And I'll see you tomorrow. You are